Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Tina Rowe, and she is from the Sport Hogs, and she it helps athletes and coaches. And today, she wants to really focus on learn how to be the best version of yourself and to use journaling to tr and, and tracking to create a more positive environmental growth. And it's so important because a lot of times when people are playing sports, they lose sight of some of the things that are most important or they're a little harder themselves. And sometimes it's, you know, it's great to have somebody who really bring out the true potential in all the athletes and coaches and, and show people directions on how to make the best person of yourself. You know, how do you become the best version of you? How do the athletes who, who work so hard, how can they become the best version of themselves? Because sometimes it could be very hard and they could be very hard in themselves. And, you know, it's, if you really feel good about yourself and you really focus on your true potential and you and you really have a good self-esteem and self-worth, you can elevate to levels that you never thought were possible. And today we have Tina here to show you how and give you great insight on how to be the best version of yourself. Tina, it is an honor to have you on the show. I am so happy that you're on the show today. And this is an important topic because especially in the athlete world and, you know, you have coaches that, you know, could be really hard sometimes on their athletes and you have athletes that can be very hard on themselves. And, you know, it's, it's really about feeling good about the accomplishments you made. And sometimes people don't even recognize some of the accomplishments they've made, you know, until they look back and they track where they were and where they are now. Now, uh, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do, because I think what you do is amazing. So I want the world to know. Tell everybody a little about you. Well, thank you, Stacy, so much for having me on today. It's an it's an honor for me to be out, you know, on your show and to be able to put our message into the world. Um, our family is super passionate about athletes and coaches. We're a family of athletes, and we're on a mission. We're on a mission to really help athletes and coaches be the best versions of themselves. And, you know, through using tools and one of the tools that our company has developed is it's a game day stats journal. And it's there to help athletes and coaches be able to figure out, you know, what is it you want out of your season? What are your goals for the season? Small, big, they could be athletic goals. They could be academic goals. They could be character goals. Um, any of the things that you're kind of looking at when you set out to play your sport and then how you track that over your season. Because I think a lot of people are really hard on themselves and especially athletes are hard on themselves thinking, you know, hey, I'm not maybe the number one goal scorer. Well, you know what? Maybe there's other things that you did for that team that are so instrumental and so important that, you know, you're becoming a completely different person and an amazing person, even though you're maybe not the number one goal scorer. So um, our mission is really to just reach out and to help kids learn how to track things because you can't improve anything that you don't track. So if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know. And yeah. You know, I think for a lot of people, when you sit down and you start at the beginning of a season and then you get to the end, if you sat down and tracked that and wrote about that, when you look back, you'll be amazed at how much progress you actually made throughout the season in many different areas of your life. You know, that's so true. Like, it, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, they're so hard on themselves. I think we are our worst enemies sometimes because we are so hard on ourselves. You know, we don't really look at the accomplishments we made. A lot of times we, we tend to look at the negative things and we don't look at the positive things. And that's what, you know, really I think hurts people is positivity is key. And I think we have to really look back at where we were at some point in our lives and where we are now and really reward ourselves because a lot of times people don't realize that they've come a long way. And instead of looking at our own faults, let's look at our accomplishments. I always say the best thing to do is to, to and, and any negative thing that happens to us, you know, let's pull out something positive from that. Well, I didn't score a goal this time. I missed the goal, you know, but you know what? I, I, I made the winning touchdown or I did this, you know, prior, you know, or I, you know, whatever the case may be, or, you know what I learned, you know, I learned from this, you know, this mistake, and now I know what to do next time, you know? So, you know, instead of like looking at things in a negative way, we have to really figure how we can be more positive and not be so hard on ourselves, I think. What do you think about that? 
I think that's really important. And I'll, I'll use my daughter as an example. She played college lacrosse and she kept a, a journal that she created on her own. And when she went back after the season and looked at it, every single game was just all the negative. It was, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't move fast enough here. I didn't switch hands here. I didn't, you know, pass the ball to this person or I didn't score uh, or I missed the shot. And, you know, that, that made me kind of sad when I thought about that because I'm like, oh my gosh, but look at all the great things you did. I'm like, look at your skill level that improved over the season. Look at what type of teammate you were. You know, your teammates were coming to you for advice and for help. You know, I'm like, you know, your leadership really rose to the top. And I think that we are, as just human beings in general, we are hard on ourselves. And, you know, and our mind plays tricks on us that way by just beating us down. And, and so it is a challenge to be able to go, hey, what did I do today? And I think, you know, whether it's sports or anything else you're doing in life, to be able to look at your day, your week, your month, your year and go, you know what? I did do some great things and I am having a positive impact on other people. And, you know, maybe I'm not the top, you know, score or I'm not the top defender or maybe I'm not the number one coach, the coach of the year. But, you know, I took my team from, you know, a losing season to an even season or, you know, to a winning season. And I think really you have to purposefully think about that because it's yeah. so easy to just get caught in the, oh, I missed that. I messed that up. Or, or you know, and so many kids get that paralysis of not wanting to mess up on the field because they don't want to disappoint their parents. They don't want to disappoint their coach or disappoint their peers. And I think a lot of kids suffer from, you know, they, maybe they don't take the shot. Maybe they don't make that move because, you know, what if, you know, and, it, and I think that's really, that is a true struggle that you have to work through mentally. And so being able to draw that out and really go, Hey, today, this is what I did. Good. This is what went well. And this is, you know, some positive things that I did at this game or at this practice. It seems like a lot of people can become frozen in their own fear, you know, because they're so worried of disappointing the people around them that they get so fearful of not reaching the potential that they they know they should that they they can't because they're so overwhelmed. They're stressed. They are fearful of not making it. And when that happens, how could you focus? Where's your clarity? You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're not able to reach your true potential because you're so wrapped up in the world around you when you should really, you know, be doing this for you. You know, it's all about you and making yourself feel good. hundred percent. And I think, you know, um, to share a story, like, I did gymnastics growing up. And so, you know, and as we've seen with the Olympics and the stuff that Simone Biles went through, you know, at the last Olympics, you know, a sport, so much of sport is mental and yeah. all it takes is one event, you know, whether it's track or swimming, one event to not go well and yeah. take your whole self out of it. And, and you're, you know, you're done. You might as well just pack up your stuff and go home. And I think learning how to come back from that um, learning how to overcome those challenges and overcome that mental, um, like you said, freeze or just disappointment. You know, yeah. once you can do that in in sports, you will then be able to parlay that into your adult life because we all know, you know, growing up doesn't get any easier once you get out of <laughs> yeah. well, college. I mean, adult adulting is very hard and, oh, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that happens to people and you have to be able to pull yourself up and say, okay, that happened. And now what, now, what am I going to do and how am I going to overcome this? And so, you know, really trying to teach that, that strength to our young people of, yeah. you know, th this doesn't define you, you, you are more than just one moment. And, and it's, it's how you react to that. And it's how you work through those things. Yes. Oh, that's so true. That's so true. 
Now, for a lot of people, you know, what would you say step one is? So, you know, someone is like struggling, they're, they're hard on themselves, you know, they're not really seeing their true potential. They're not seeing how good they really are. You know, they look in the mirror and they're looking at the things they're doing wrong rather than the things they're doing right. You know, what would, what would be your suggestions for people to turn around their mindset, to be able to really focus on, on changing their self-worth, their self-esteem, to be able to look in the mirror and not think about what you not, didn't do, but what you did do? I think for, for most people, um, whether you're an athlete or you're not athlete, it's really sitting down and getting a game plan together. I mean, you know, and, and that's what we're trying to do is say, Hey, you know, what are your goals? And that's really the first thing in our opinion to, is to start with is what are your goals? And they don't have to be, you know, your big, Oh my gosh, you know, pie in the sky kind of goals, you know, because you should have those, but you also need small goals because you need yeah. little, wins. you know, you got to have the little wins along the way. So, yeah. you know, for some people it's like, you know, for like some athletes, especially if you get to, when you get to college, it's like, Hey, I showed up to practice on time, you know, I mean, just because sometimes life is just hard. And I think it's, it's sitting down and setting up the goals and saying, okay, here's what I want. And then you have to set up a roadmap, you know, how are you actually going to achieve those goals? And, you know, we look at Mike, Michael Phelps, uh, Serena Williams, um, just Simone Biles, there's so many I can name athletes, Katie Ledecky, who, you know, now they're all amazing and, you know, have all done phenomenal things in their lives. But even those people way early in the day, a Caitlin Clark, you know, back in third, fourth grade, these, a lot of these athletes were writing down, Hey, I want to be an Olympic athlete, but they didn't just write it down. Then they put into plan and into progression. This is what I'm doing. And this is how I'm going to get there because you can't just write it down and think it's just going to happen. You actually have to do the work to get there. So I think for most people, if you're struggling with your mindset and you're struggling with, you know, I'm not where I want to be, get in tune with yourself. And you really have to look at yourself and ask yourself and ask your heart, what is it that I really want? And what are my goals? And then write those down and then get your plan together on how you're going to achieve those. And get help. I mean, that That's the other thing, get help. And there's a lot of people out there and so many aspects that can help you achieve your goals. I think that's what, like one of the number one problems is people are afraid to ask for help. People are afraid that people are going to think well, that they're not good enough, they're, that they're going to think bad about them and they're scared to ask for help when asking for help is probably one of the best things you can do because people want to help, you know, or sometimes I, I've gotten a lot of input from people. Well, I don't want to inconvenience them. You know, I don't want to be an inconvenience. I don't, you know, I'm afraid to, you know, tell my story, you know, what are they going to think about me? You know, and that goes back to self-esteem, but you know, once you share your story with people that can relate and guide you, you know, people who have been through it, you know, I think that's the best thing is find and support from people that have been through it, understand where you're coming from, that have already overcome it. And now they can guide you and lead you to that direction of overcoming it yourself. And I think it's so important. I think that's a great um, tip that you just gave is that reaching out for support because there, there are so many people out there like your organization, this, you know, the sports hogs and, and other organizations out there that will give support, you know, and it's okay, you know, because nobody has all the answers. Nobody is perfect, you know? So right. I, I think it's, you know, it's great that, you know, that you suggest, you know, support, you know, for others. So when you have, you have your short-term goals, you have your long-term goals, you know, you're setting your purpose in life, you're asking for support. What are some other things too, that people can actually, you know, write down and, and incorporate into their lives to help them on their way to becoming the person that they want to become, that person, you know, reach their true potential and be able to learn how to actually, you know, use journaling and tracking to actually make them grow and elevate to higher levels. Well, Stacey, I think once you've got your goals written down and you've kind of got your plan, then the next piece of that is really measuring what you're doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, for some people, that's a day-to-day -day thing. Some people, maybe it's a week-to-week. -week. Um, you know, like I said, that which is measured 
can be improved, but if we don't measure it, we can't improve it because we don't know what we don't know. And I think that's probably the biggest piece that people kind of leave out is they, Hey, I have these goals, you know, and athletes, Oh, I want to do this, but then they don't actually, they don't even know what they're doing. They just show up to practice and they practice, but they're not really working on that. And maybe they haven't shared that goal with somebody. So maybe the coach doesn't even know, Hey, this kid really wants to do that because, you know, I've seen it with my own girls that, you know, you can share your goal with somebody. And if the coach, you know, maybe they buy in, I agree with you, maybe they don't, but if they're not helping you, you're kind of on your own and it's hard to reach goals by yourself sometimes. And, you know, I mean, you're just like, and especially when you have a, a down day or a bad day, but I think, you know, that next piece of it is really figuring out what, what item or items do you need to track? What is it that you're tracking that will actually help you get, you know, help you on that road to improvement and to actually reaching the goals? Um, Because you just, like I said, you don't just write down a goal and say, oh, I'm good. You know, I wrote it down. I'm going to achieve it. No, you have to do the work, you know, and, and that work is for an athlete and for coaches, you know, it's physical, but it is also up here. It is so much mental work, you know, visualizing what you're going to do, getting a routine. I mean, even just, you know, spending some time in the morning when you get up with, you know, maybe you do some meditation, maybe you do some reading, um, you know, positive affirmations. There's a lot of things that you can do to kind of help yourself on your way to doing that. Um, we try to also include in our journal um, a space for people to express gratitude because every day we should be grateful that we all woke up. Yeah. You know, sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, life is just really short when you look around and you, and you see, you know, stuff that happens and, um, you know, being grateful for relationships and the things that we get to do and the people that we know and the impact that you can have on other people, you know, all yeah. of those things. Um, but I would say that's probably the next step would be, you know, after you've got your goals together, you know, figure out what it is you can measure and then how do you measure it? And then Mm -hmm. actually writing it down and tracking that on, Hey, I'm doing this. I'm not doing this. You know, like, like an athlete world, you know, if you're trying to improve your skills, then are you practicing those skills? Right. You know, cause, cause a lot of times, you know, we we're in so much of this play games, play games, play games, you know especially all the summer league stuff that goes on. And sometimes it's really just skill. You just need to work on your skills. And if you can up your skills, then you're going to play better, you know, versus just playing and playing. And and maybe you have a coach that gives you good skill um, criticism or, you know, feedback. Maybe you don't have a coach that does that. And so really you're just wearing your body down and you're not necessarily gaining any, um, any steps on the, on the way to excellence, I guess is a good way to put it. Do you, do you have, do you see in your organization when you work with a lot of these athletes and you work with a lot of these coaches, are there some common problems that they bring up all the time? And do you have some solutions to those common problems? So I think motivation is probably a common problem. And I think when you talk about like um, a high school athlete, motivation is a big deal because let's talk about a football team. You mm-hmm. could have, you know, 50 plus players, you know, however, however many your school allows on the team and maybe a handful want to go play in college and the rest are just playing because their friends are playing or their parents mm-hmm. are making play. Yeah. And so their motivation is really different. And, right. and I think as a coach, understanding the motivation of your players, you know, a yeah. basic question that we like to ask our athletes is why do you play football? Why do you play soccer? why do you play hockey? Why do you swim? You know, why do you golf? Because if you don't know why you do that, then how are you going to get any better at it? If you don't understand what motivates you, because if you're only playing a sport because your friends are playing, your motivation is completely different than somebody that's like, you know what, I'm trying to get a scholarship to go to college. And I love sport. And, you know, and, and, and our daughter, the, our youngest daughter, she knew from the beginning of lacrosse that she wanted to play in college. And, and that was something that she had to work through in high school is that not everybody on her team had the same goal. And so how do you 
you, you know, how do you manage that? And then, you know, my husband was the coach. How does he, as a coach, manage those, um, the motivation of all of the athletes when some of them are just there and, you know, maybe, um, you know, chemistry is more important to them because they want to, you know, they want to get into med school they want to go to college and be a doctor. And so they're, right. you know, that's more important than, you know, playing the sport. So I think motivation is probably one of the biggest areas that coaches struggle with on, you know, how to get everybody on the same page. Yeah. Um, I have a rugby coach that, that I visited with and she, she told me that when she met with her team at the beginning of the season, she's like, Hey, what do we want to do? And everybody's like, we want to win. We want to win the championship. And, and then she's like, okay. And then the next practice, she came to practice and she's like, here's the plan, you know, here's our, here's our plan of, of this is how we're going to get there. And she said, it was like, Oh, um, we don't really want to win a championship. And a oh, lot wow. of the girls on the team were like, that's not really our goal. We don't really want to work that hard. Oh, and wow. It was a really pivotal moment for her as a coach, because she's like, yeah. I was all excited. I was pumped. I was like, yeah, these girls want to win a championship. And then when I told them what it was going to take to do it, they were like, mm, we don't want to do that. That's, oh wow. you know, we just, we just want to have fun. We want to have a good time. We want to win some games, but we don't want to try and, you know, be the top level. And so, you know, she really changed her, her practice plans. She really changed how she was reacting with them. And, you know, and I think for her, it was a function of, okay, this is what they're saying. They don't really want to work this hard, but is there still a way that I can use that and create yeah. motivation and create some discipline to yeah. help them learn about themselves and still create a winning team like your husband, right? Mm -hmm. You know, out maybe having the talent or people with that kind of mindset of going, Hey, I want to be up here, you know, can you still create that? And so that I think is a challenge for coaches. Um, I think the motivation is a, a big piece. I think discipline's another one, just, you know, a lot of people say they want to do things, but do they actually have the discipline to do it? Because most things in life take discipline and yes. constant activity, constant movement, you know, things don't just happen you know you, yeah. you actually pursue them and and take the necessary steps and and how many people are really disciplined to do that so um, right. those are probably two highest challenges that I think you know I've seen our coaches and our athletes have is figuring out what motivates them and how do they improve their discipline do you have any suggestions on how to for a coach how to motivate their team, how to get them really pumped up, even if they're there just to play with their friends and they're not thinking about getting a scholarship. Is there is there certain tactics or strategies or, or things they could do to bring the motivational level high where everybody, even though their, their intentions are different, you can get them on the same motivational level? I think there's a couple things, Stacey, that you can do. Um, one is everybody's got to be on the same page. So even if you, you know, and that's why we love our journals with coaching involved is that, yeah. you know, because we have some athletes who use our journals individually and that works great for them, but we feel like the biggest impact is when a coach actually uses them with their whole team, because now a coach can put, you know, goals in there and it doesn't have to be the championship team. You know, it could be smaller stuff, but if you can create a common goal that you can get buy-in from everybody on the team, that'll make yeah. a huge difference, you know? And then I think really, you know, getting to know your team, getting to know the players, what makes them tick, their motivations, what is it they really want? And then being able to do a lot of, um, I think team bonding has a lot to do with getting teams to a different level, being able to see each other in a different light, you know? Um, because we all know with teams, a lot of times, you know, there's different clicks on the team and stuff like that. But I think coaches can really figure out a way to, through team bonding, to yeah. get everybody on the same page. And, um, you know, I don't want to say break up the clicks, but, you know, there are things that they can do at practices and, and other things. It's the same as having like, um, like a lot of my girls teams would have like um, kind of a big sister 
perspective where, you know, if you were an upperclassman, you were connected to a lower classman. And I think, you know, it's, it's teaching leadership, it's teaching character building. I mean, there's just so many aspects that, that I think coaches can get in there and do, but commonality and really getting everybody on the same page, I think is, is one of the biggest pieces. And for, for discipline, like what different, different tactics and different, different methods do you use to really get, you know, people to, to be disciplined and to, and to create a schedule and to create and create practice and make goals for themselves so they can improve, you know, what are, what are some ways that, you know, that, you know, that help coaches help their teams become more disciplined and even the players themselves, you know, maybe they're there for different reasons, but how do we get their level of discipline to a point where they're going to, no matter what their reason for being there, they're there. So how do, how do you get them to the point where, okay, I signed up, I'm here, you know, I have to be disciplined. I'm, I'm here to help the team. This is teamwork, you know, and you get them to that point where they they are they are disciplined. They they have a common goal, common denominator, and they're headed towards that same goal. I think number one is expectations. I, you have to really be clear with what your expectations are, and I think that goes to the the lowest level of you know high school athlete. I mean, yeah. you know. Hey, you're supposed to be a practice on time. I mean, obviously there's, you know, situations if somebody's taking a test and different things, but I think holding everybody to the same standard. So, right. you know, your, your top score doesn't get to just show up whenever or yeah. get to behave a certain manner when other players have to do certain things. So I think, you know, right. some of the discipline is um, from coaches. It's also setting an example. You know, if you're not a good example, if you're not respectful to your players, how do you expect them to respect you? You know, exactly. I think there's a, a mutual respect there on on that. It's it's the same as um, when my daughter and husband, you know, when he was coaching her high school team, you know, there was a lot of conversation about, hey, when you say practice ends at 730, it needs to end at 730. It doesn't yeah. then until eight o'clock. And, and again, that's something that's so simple that you don't really think about. And, you know, maybe as a coach, you're just like, Oh, Hey, well, we're just, you know, we're going and it's going great. But then you put yeah. kids in a situation where, Hey, you said it was going to be over at seven 30. I got to get to a job or I need to get home. Cause I've got to do something with my parent, my parents or my family. You know, you put kids in situations where then it's harder for them because, you know, you're not respecting their time. And then yeah you don't respect you and your time as much because they're like, guys, oh, they're going to go over anyway. Right. So now I'm going to be 20 minutes late because it's not going to matter. You know, they don't care. And, and, and I can even equate that too. you know, when my oldest daughter, you know, when she did dance, there were many times I'd show up to pick up at practice and they were still going. And, you mm -hmm. know, and it's like, if practice ends at this time, you know, figure out how to get it done, you know, as coaches get it done in the time that you say. And I think just, um, like I said, working on that mutual respect between each other and providing that leadership and the character and yeah. really showing that you care. I mean, I think that's, that's a lot of it too, is just, yeah. you know, you want kids to know that you actually care about them and you care about them more than just an athlete. You actually care about them as a person. Um, I think for, for most athletes, you know, all, most of the schools all have a minimum, you know, GPA that you have to have to be able to play. So yeah. I think in some aspects, there's some automatic discipline built in because, hey, I have to at least have decent grades. Yeah. Um, you know, and I know in college, you know, a lot of the college teams, you know, it's kind of a contest of, you know, hey, which team has the highest GPA? Um, you know, so some of that discipline is just instilled automatically but helping people with um, study times, sometimes there needs to be a set aside, you know, hey, it's study hall, everybody's going to show up and, and study. So right. I think there's things that you can do as a coach, depending upon what your situation is with your team. Oh, I agree totally with you. Now, you know, I, I think I think those two characteristics that you brought up are so important. First of all, respect. You know, I think the coaches need to give respect to the students and the students need to give respect for the, to the coaches. And when you have a lack of respect, either coming from either or, you know, that's when I, I think the demeanor kind of like sets in and people's, you know, the, their, their, the, 
to that that bond that team kind of starts to break up a little bit because you know you everybody wants respect you know especially if you're putting effort into something you want respect you know whether you're you're able to do a good job or you're having a tough time you know um you you need you know everybody deserves respect and 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 it helps with your self esteem it helps with your self worth it, it makes you feel good as a person when others respect you you know it it brings you it definitely brings brings you to that higher level it brings your potential out because when you know I, I don't think people realize sometimes not you know I think a lot of people do but there are people that, that don't realize respect is so important and and I and I like that you gave the you know you talked about care also you know you have to you have to care you know both the coach has to care and 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 this and the students have to care you know that that's a, a major a major um portion I think of it also Absolutely. And I think, you know, so many of the great coaches out there, that's a common theme that you will hear from their athletes is that they felt like the coach cared about them more than just an athlete, you know, yeah. they cared about them as a person. And, and I think, you know, as a coach, you have to recognize when a kid shows up to practice and they're just really not themselves, what's going on, you know? And, right. and I think, you know, there's so much more um, emphasis today on the mental aspect, you know, I mean, back in my day, you know, I mean, I don't know that. Yeah, I'm kind of like, what was going on with the Olympic athletes back then? Because I mean, we just didn't really talk about it like no. we do today. And mm -hmm. you know, and it is a good thing. I mean, there, you know, it's kind of like um, the Olympic athletes that you know, if you trained your whole life and then you, the Olympics are over and then you go into a massive depression because everything you worked for is done. And I yeah. can equate to, um, I opened several resorts in Las Vegas and. I mean, I was working hundred hour weeks and when we finally opened to the public, it was like a depression. It was like, we had been working so hard and so long. And all of a sudden, you know, everybody was calling me, you know, with my radio, my pager, my phone. And then all of a sudden it was like dead silent because the operations team was now just trying to get up and running with, you know, customers and, and patrons coming yeah. in. And, you know, the, the aspect that I was involved with was quiet. And it was, and it was a really, you know, that's hard to go through. And especially, you know, a lot yeah. of athletes do that. And, and even like the college athlete who, you know, maybe they're in a sport that they're not going to go on to play, you know, professionally. And that's all they've done for years and years. And it was everything. And now they're like, now what do I do? Yeah. You know? Okay. You know, now I don't go to practice five and six days a week. So what do I do with my time? Yeah. You know, and I just, there's just so many pieces and parts to it that, you know, I think um, it's great to see those things highlighted today um, yeah. because I think there's a lot of areas that we can help people through that. Whereas I think in the past, people just kind of struggled through that alone. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. It kind of reminds me of like empty uh, nesters syndrome, but for sports, <laughs> yes. you know what I mean? Like, yes. you know, you, you're this, this athlete for so long and then all of a sudden it's gone and like, okay, now what, you know? Yeah. Well, and even as parents, you know, if you, you've spent all these years going to all these sports, you know, and our kids, you know, we, we expose them to so many sports because again, we just hoped that they would find something they were passionate about. And, yeah. uh, you know, and then after it all ended, I was like, wow, we have like a lot of time on our hands, you know, what are we doing? And, and I've actually heard yeah. of, you know, grandparents or parents like going and showing up at high school stuff just to just to sit and watch a game because they yeah. just, you know, they just miss it. And, and I think, you know, at that time when families are in that season of life, it's just so yeah. busy and we don't always enjoy that moment. And then when it's over, we're like, wow, those were some really great times. And we got to spend a lot of quality time together. And, you know, when you have like a coaching relationship with a kid, like, like my husband and daughter, you know, there were times where she was just like, uh, we're not talking about the game on the drive home. You know, I, I just want to just let me be, I know that wasn't my best game. Just, you know, let right. me work through that. And then we can talk about it tomorrow. You know, and right. I think being able to recognize those kinds of things as parents of yeah. you know, parents want to help so much, but sometimes you just got to let kids process things themselves yeah. mm -hmm. and when they're ready to talk, they will, sometimes they won't be ready to talk at all. And right journaling is another way for those kids to be able to get that those thoughts and those things in their mind about their games and their practices 
to write those things down to be able to kind of work through those when maybe they're afraid to talk to a coach or a parent about it. I think journaling is such a powerful tool. I think it it, it really helps people grow and, and it really gets those emotions out. You know, a lot of times, like we mentioned earlier in the show, not everyone is verbal. Not everyone has an easy time taking those emotions and verbally expressing them. And sometimes people don't even know how to express them. You know, they, they feel those feelings inside. Some people might not even know exactly what it is. You know, they just feel, you know, they just feel like there's a pot of water boiling somewhere, but they don't really know what's going on. They, you know, they just know that they're not feeling right and they're not happy and, but they really don't know the root cause. They don't know what's going on, even though it's right in front of them until they start journaling. And then it's like, wow, oh, I see. This is when it started. It was because of this, you know, and and because it was this, you know, I, I kind of felt this way and this way and this way while it was happening. And you start to put the pieces to the puzzle together. And then it, it the healing process starts, it starts also. And right. I, it, it, it's ahead. just like the kid, um, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's just like the kid who, you know, maybe is afraid to miss when they take a shot. And so yeah. they just get so amped up inside that then then they're not aggressive. They don't play aggressive because they're so worried about what other people will think about them missing the shot. And, yeah. and, you know, and what is that really about? You know, is that the, that person's a people pleaser? Is it, is it they're worried about how their peers are going to treat them? You know, what did something else happen in their life? You know, when they were younger, that somebody got on them about missing a shot. I, I mean, there's yeah. just so many pieces that until you write it down, you just don't even really know. And, and like for us, you know, we tried to not be like over intense on the journaling piece of it, just because, you know, most kids in high school, college, you know, they're not going to sit and answer a million prompts about their games and stuff, you know, so we wanted to just give them some basic stuff. And then, you know, and then after each game, you've got a place to, you know, to, to write your notes and to write film review and to write things that you're grateful for um, affirmations and, and, you know, really get your plan together from game to game to game on, you know, how you're going to become better and, and become better all the way through on and off the field. Right. Now tell me a little bit more about the journal that you created. Now, what exactly, you know, is the journal that you created and tell me, give me some details and a little about it. So Stacy, it's a hard bound book. And the reason that we did that is because we wanted to get people off their phones. We <laughs> wanted to get, you know, pen to paper, really engage the mind and the hand and the heart with what I'm writing down, you know, and we wanted to put the phone aside. Um, most coaches, when they do film review and things like that, you know, they're using notebooks. They're not, they're not having kids do that on their phones. So, um, you know, it's a hardbound spiral notebook that basically takes you from the beginning of season to the end. So in the beginning, you're going to list out your goals. You're going to talk about the things that you're looking for and goals aren't necessarily, they don't have to be athletic. It could be, you know, yeah. Hey, I want to get an A in chemistry or, you know, I, I'm really struggling in, you know, in algebra and I just really want to get a B. Um, right. you know, it could be that I want to make the honor roll. It could be that, you know, I want to be a better teammate or, yeah. I mean, there's so many different pieces and parts. It doesn't have to be tied to an actual skill or a score or a yes. number of like that. So you're, you've got your goals then. Um, and then we've got several journal prompts of, you know, things like, for example, like, um, you know, why do I play? soccer, you know, things to really make you think about what is it that I'm doing? Um, questions like, what do you want out of your season? You right. Know, what is it you really want? And what do you need from your coach? What do you need yeah. from your coach? What do you need from your teammates to be successful? Yes. Um, also looking at your own characteristics of, you know, what are my strengths and how can I use those to help my team? Right. You know? Um, and then once you get through kind of the journal prompting, then we start out with our game day and all of our journals, we kind of, um, we looked at the NCAA stats and we tried to give each one of our sports enough games that if you started at the beginning of season and you went all the way to the championship round, you would have enough spots for every single game. So, uh, baseball and softball, that's a little, that's our biggest one just cause they play so many games. Um, yeah. but 
each game day, you're going to have a spot to, you know, list who you're playing, what's going on there, what your objective is for the game, you mm-hmm. know, because you should have objectives when you show up to your game. What What's your plan? What What is it that you want out of that game? Um, and then a place for positive affirmations, things that you should be saying to yourself before the game that are kind mm-hmm. and helpful, you know, yeah. rather than some of the negative stuff that we say. Um, right. And then we've got our stats page with all of those also mirror the NCAA. So, you know, I know that in high school, we don't necessarily track everything in high school that a college team would track, but we wanted to kind of have a, it all in one. So that if you were playing in high school and you wanted to go on to play in college, you would know, Hey, these are the things that they're looking at. Um, So you've got a spot to track your stats. And then after that, you've got a space to talk about what you did well Mm -hmm. and you know, different notes, any review, just overall thoughts, and then a place where, you know, what are you grateful for? Because at the end of the day, you know, you should be grateful that you're able to, you know, that you're able to play a sport and that you, you know, you've got teammates that you've got people that care about you. Um, And then we pretty much repeat that through the season. And then at the end of the season, we're going to have more journal prompts about, you know, did the season really turn out the way that you had planned? You know, yeah. what was something you learned about yourself? Um, did you impact someone or did somebody impact you? And how did they impact you? Because that's right. really a, the biggest thing. I think most of us in life, you know, we want to know we made a difference. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody wants to know what's my purpose? What's my passion? You know, why am yeah. I here? And ultimately, if you made a difference in one person's life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a win. You win. You have won. So, um, and then you're setting your goals for next season, you yeah. know, and you're kind of repeating that for the next year. So, um, again, you know, if an individual athlete works through that themselves, which some people will, um, you know, you've got that to go through. If a coach is working through that, then the coach is, you know, integrating that, you know, Hey, we're showing up, you know, 15 minutes before the game everybody's going to sit down. We're going to talk about our objectives. You're going to write your stuff. And then, you know, after games, high school is probably a little harder because a lot of times when games are over, kids leave, but you know, maybe it's the next day of practice, they are sitting down and, and, you know, reflecting on that game, because if you wait till the end of the season, you're not going to remember. And it's, and, you know, and like a great example would be, what if all of a sudden the kid has a breakout game? Yeah. What was it about that game? What was it about that mental preparation? What was it about that game that was different than the other games? And when you've right. tracked that and you've written that down, then maybe you can go, oh, we need to be doing that every game. And then yeah. every game starts to be, you know, a better game for that kid. I love it. Now, do you have one specific journal or do you have a journal for each each type of sports? Right now we have 14 journals. So we have 14 sports that are um, represented. Um, we're, we're, we've got some other ones in the works. So we don't have every single sport out there, but we have the majority of them. So um, baseball, softball, basketball, swimming and diving, golf, tennis, um, hockey, gymnastics, lacrosse, volleyball. I know I'm missing some, um, but we've got those. And then we also have a coach's journal and it's, it's a little bit different. Um, there's a couple different spots for coaches that we've asked a few more insightful questions for them to really think about in their seasons, but you know, a coach and their coaching staff can use the coach's journal, but then it will mostly mirror the Mm -hmm. athletes so they can be going through it together. Oh, I like that a lot. Now, where can people find these journals? So if you go to www.sportshogs, and that's H-A-W-G-S dot com, um, you can find all of our journals there. We've got some fun swag too, but um, all of our journals for coaches, we also offer an additional just if a coach really wants us to work with them through the season, to hold them accountable, to help them incorporate that, you know, we have the ability to do that as well. Um and like I said, we're, we're pretty excited about it. We're, we're just on a mission to, we just want everybody to be the best that they can be because there's so yeah. many positive things that can come out of your time in sports, whether it's a yeah. short time or it's a long time. Oh yeah. It, it's, it is an integral part of your fiber and your being and the things that you, the experiences that you have and the things that you learn from that, you will take those on with you to adulthood. 
He will. He definitely will. I love this. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you really wanted to point out and emphasize on some important factors, what are some of the things you'd really like to emphasize to the listeners today? I think just have a plan. And I mean, if if you want, if you want to do certain things in life, and I because I don't want to say if you want to be successful, because I would say probably most people want to be successful. I mean, you know, we don't just show up in the world and go, hey, I just want to exist. You know, I mean, most people <laughs> want to be successful. But yeah. I mean, if you really mean what you say and you have things that you really want to do in life, get a plan together. And it doesn't matter, you know, I mean, obviously we're geared toward the athlete and the coach, but you can take what we're doing. It's the same. It's yeah. saying, hey, what are some goals that I want to do? Some things, you know, maybe it's what you want to do. Maybe it's what you want to have. Maybe it's what you want to be. And then yeah. how do you set into play a plan to get there? And, you know, anything that, again, that you can plan and do and measure, you will eventually get there. And when you look back, you'll go, wow. I mean, most people underestimate what they can do, you know? Yeah in a day, in a week. But when you look back on a year or mm -hmm. two years or five years, I mean, you can just be blown away with what you can accomplish. Yeah. Oh, for sure. A hundred percent. Oh my God. This has been great. Now, did you have a newsletter also on your website that people can sign up for? So if you come in and sign up, we do have newsletters that go out giving you just tips for, um, gosh, I don't know, journaling, you know, how to be better, just, you know, different stories and things like that. So you yeah. can definitely sign up there and, um, you know, we're, we are growing. So as we continue to grow, you know, we hope to offer, you know, additional things and additional resources and tools for, for people that, you know, want to help themselves get better athletically, help their team, um, coaches, everybody just developing and becoming the best version of themselves. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. I, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been, you know, I think it's so important because I, I think, you know, a lot of times people don't really focus on, you know, the coaches and, and this and the, the athletes and what really goes behind it. Like they just, you know, they, they put them out there, they play, but they're not really thinking about, you know, how it affects them as a person, what their, you know, what their true intentions are when they walk on that field. Did they go out there for fun? Are they going out there for a scholarship? Do they really want to maybe one day try to make it to the NFL or try to make it to, you know, professionals, you know, become a professional athlete? You know, you, you just don't know what their goals are but you know it's you really have to like try to work as a team and and the coach has to like like you mentioned show respect and care the the students have to show respect and, and care and even if their expectations are different how do you get that emotional motivational level to be you know on the same level how do you work together as a team and how do you show that care and that discipline these are things that i i think sometimes are avoided and people don't really focus on and and how does it affect a teammate when they don't make that goal or they don't make that touchdown? And, you know, or, you know, so, you know, it really, you know, you really want them to come out of there with really positive skills, you know, mentally and physically. You want them to, you know, have memories when they come out of there that it makes them feel good as a person. You don't want them to think back of when they played sports and have negative memories. You want them to be, have positive memories and you want it, you know, so when they, when they graduate and they leave, they have, they have, they've learned tools that are going to actually help them excel in life as well. And so, you know, by, by teaching coaches and by, by teaching, by teaching students, different, different tools, techniques, and strategies, how to excel and how to motivate, how to care, how to show respect, how to, you know, work together as a team. These are great ways. And also to look at your potential, you know, and to, and to look back at the past and to look where you are now and give yourself credits and give yourself rewards and not look at what you didn't do, but look at what you did do, you know? And these are things that I think can help a person excel in life and make them stronger, happier, 
and build their self-esteem. So in life, actually, when they grow up and they're getting jobs and they're doing things out there, the tools they learned in their childhood years could actually benefit them in their adult years. And that's what we want for them. And I think so I think what you're doing is great. And I love the fact that you're doing journaling. And I think journaling is so powerful. And I love how you have so many different journals for different sports and how you're really making people look at themselves, look at what they need to do help them bring their emotions out, you know, and really focus on what they need to do to improve themselves, to love themselves, to respect themselves. And, you know, it's, it's great what you're doing. I really commend you on all your efforts. I think what, I think sports hogs is, is, is an excellent, you know, um, organization that you've created and I give you, you know, kudos for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Stacy. We're super excited. And, um, you know, if, if just one kid, if it just makes a difference for one kid, then it, and it's all worth it, you know, it's oh, just, 100%. you know, I mean, it's just, it, it's just an amazing life that we all live. And, yeah. you know, I, I want people to feel good about their stuff. You know, I, I have phenomenal memories of my time in gymnastics over the years. I mean, obviously there were trials and tribulations there, but, you know, I learned a lot about myself and, you know, I've taken that with me into adulthood, with how I approach business, how I have approached, you know, my kids and their sports and all of those things. And um, yeah, it's just, it's exciting. So we so much appreciate you letting us come on here and sharing our story. And um, it's been awesome. So thank you so much, Stacey. Oh, thank you. I, and I hope to have you back on. I love what you're doing. And, and thank you. I, you've been, you're, what you're doing is amazing. And I give you guys kudos. Thank you. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.